Hey, it's Medicosis Perfectionellus, where medicine makes perfect sense. Today we have a quick review about rheumatoid arthritis. I've talked about rheumatoid arthritis in more than 15 videos, so if you need anything, go to the previous videos. Before you learn anything about rheumatoid, you have to know that we divide rheumatological disease into non-inflammatory and inflammatory. Rheumatoid is a freaking inflammatory arthritis. The difference between non-inflammatory such as osteo and inflammatory such as rheumatoid is imperative. Rheumatoid is autoimmune, chronic, systemic inflammation, therefore there is pain and swelling, constitutional symptoms, joint pain will improve with use, it's symmetrical arthritis, you will have elevation of ESR and CRP. It's inflammatory, it affects small joints, commoner in females, it's a chronic disease, sometimes with acute flares, joint fluid analysis will give you a white blood cell count in the joint, greater than 2000 but less than 100,000. Prolonged morning stiffness for more than one hour, synovitis is key. Rheumatoid, what's the definition? It's an autoimmune systemic symmetrical chronic inflammatory polyarthritis that involves small peripheral joints and more common in females than males. It can have articular and extra-articular manifestations. What is the etiology? Unknown. Some genetic factors, some environmental factors. HLA, DR4 association, you'll find RF and anti-CCP. If any of these are positive, we call this a seropositive rheumatoid. Typical age of presentation is 40 to 50. Pathophysiology, the hallmark of rheumatoid is synovitis and penis formation. The penis is very destructive. Cytokines are also key. As you see, the green here is the penis and it's destroying everything. It's destroying the cartilage, the bone, everything. There is loss of cartilage and there is joint space narrowing. Sometimes there is an eventual ankylosis, which is fusion, loss of cartilage, rest in peace cartilage, osteopenia and osteoporosis in the adjacent bone. Symptoms of rheumatoid arthritis can range from very mild joint involvement all the way to severe erosion and joint deformity with subluxation, synovitis, malalignment, ulnar deviation, tenosynovitis, ligament dyslexity, I mean dyslaxity, decreased grip strength, decreased range of movement, loss of function and permanent joint damage. It's a horrible disease. Clinically, we have rheumatoid symptoms, rheumatoid complications, and association symptoms are either articular or extra-articular. The articular are either upper extremity, lower extremities, or atlantoaxial joint. Let's start with the articular manifestations. It's a chronic disease, so you need more than six weeks of symptoms. It's inflammatory. There are cardinal signs of inflammation. It's symmetrical, small joint involvement, and it's polyarticular. There is joint pain that's worse in the morning and it improves with activity. The joint stiffness or morning stiffness is greater than one hour of symptoms in the morning. It also improves with activity. So with activity, the pain improves and the stiffness improves. Rheumatoid arthritis of the hand most commonly affect the wrist, MCP and PIP, but not the DIP. DIP is spared as you see. Flexor tendon synovitis, Deformities such as one neck deformity, boutonniere, zeta thumb deformity, MCP subluxation, which can lead to ulnar deviation, piano key sign, joint destruction, flexion, contractures of the elbow. What's the difference between contraction and contracture? Contraction is of muscles, but contracture is of a joint. This is the swan neck deformity, the boutonniere deformity. My French is awful. Zeta thumb deformity or Z thumb deformity. Piano key sign. This is not a problem in your fingers. This is a problem in the distal radio ulnar joint. In the lower extremities, you can get MTP, which is equivalent to MCP in the upper extremities. There is chronic inflammation of ankle and metursus. You can get pis plano vulgus and pis planus. Cervical spine subluxation rheumatoid is very important. The risk factors include seropositive rheumatoid if it's long standing active with extra articular manifestations. Why C1 and C2? Because it's a synovial joint. The patient may complain of recurrent occipital headache, neck pain, decreased neck range of motion, and neurological deficits. If you suspect atlantoaxial subluxation, you need an x-ray of the cervical spine with flexion and extension views. If the x-ray came back showing subluxation or if you find neurological deficits on physical exam, the next step is to MRI the spine. 
Complications of atlantoaxial subluxation include cord compression, myelopathy, radiculopathy, acute subluxation with compression it can affect arteries and it can lead to quadriparesis and even sudden death. Treatment is surgery. Rheumatoid has symptoms, complications, and associations. What are the complications? Secondary amyloidosis. Imagine my shock. It's a chronic inflammation. Anemia, type 1 RTA, reactive lymphadenitis, unintentional weight loss, Phil T syndrome, sometimes CHF, and even coronary artery disease. Rheumatoid has symptoms, complications, and associations, which include other autoimmune diseases such as Jogren, osteoporosis, and hypoandrogenism. No! We are done with complications and associations, articular manifestations. Let's talk about extraarticular manifestations. The extraarticular symptoms may begin before or after the arthritis itself. The prevalence about 40% of patients. Why? Because it's a systemic freaking inflammation. Who is susceptible? Patients who are seropositives, cigarette smokers, early onset arthritis types. We have general symptoms and organ specific extraarticular symptoms. What are those general symptoms, also known as constitutional symptoms? Fatigue, depression, malaise, weakness, anorexia, weight loss, and even cachexia. And by the way, I have antibiotics lectures on my website. Go to medicosisperfectionalis.com. I've told you that the extraarticular manifestations are general and organ specific. Let's start with the heart, cardiovascular. Please remember pericarditis and pericardial effusion, CHF, aortitis, and coronary artery disease. We are done with cardio, let's talk about vascular. Please remember necrotizing angiitis, aortitis, type 3 hypersensitivity, which is an immune complex vasculitis. Rheumatoid is generally type 4 hypersensitivity, but when you have immune complex deposition, it's usually type 3, so it can be both. When it comes to the lungs, please remember pleural effusion and know the characteristics of this effusion, the friction rub, and the interstitial lung disease slash fibrosis. When it comes to salivary glands, you can have chronic sialadenitis of the major salivary glands. When it comes to your eyes, you can get keratoconjunctivitis sicca, which is secondary Jogren syndrome, episcleritis, and scleritis. Uveitis is not common in rheumatoid. It's common in other diseases, but not in rheumatoid. Nerve problems in rheumatoid include carpal tunnel syndrome, peripheral neuropathy, including mononeuritis multiplex. Don't be fooled. It's not mononeuropathy. It's polyneuropathy. It's just a stupid name radiculopathy and myelopathy. Skin problems include rheumatoid nodules, Baker cyst or popliteal cyst, as well as pyoderma freaking gangrenosum. Please remember that the type of necrosis here is fibrinoid necrosis because rheumatoid is an autoimmune disease. Also, these nodules are not only seen on the skin, you can find them in the lung, heart valve, or on serous membranes. Hematological abnormalities include anemia. The most common subtype of anemia here is normocytic, normochromic, but it's not the only one. Also, autoimmune can happen. Megaloblastic anemia if you take methotrexate. Neutropenia is common and lymphoma can happen. What type of lymphoma? Diffuse large B-cell lymphoma. That's a non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. Here is a visual illustration of the extraarticular manifestations in a nutshell. How to diagnose rheumatoid arthritis? There are many criteria. Rheumatoid factor is usually positive. What is rheumatoid? IgM antibodies against the FC portion of IgGs. Rheumatoid factor is more sensitive. When it's very high, it carries a worse prognosis and it does correlate with the severity of the symptoms. Anti-CCP can also be positive in rheumatoid arthritis. It's specific and it predicts the progression of rheumatoid arthritis. If your anti-CCP is positive, you are more likely to develop erosions and joint deformities and it carries a worse prognosis. Diagnosis of rheumatoid depends on the clinical, history and physical, lab results, joint fluid analysis, radiology, the most accurate test is tissue biopsy. Some tips for diagnosis of rheumatoid, you need inflammatory arthritis, 1 to 10 joints, duration of greater than 6 weeks, rheumatoid factor and anti-CCP positive, high ESR or CRP. These are the 2010 criteria for rheumatoid arthritis. You can always get the up-to-date criteria on rheumatology.org. 
Lab results in rheumatoid arthritis, ESR and CRP are usually high, ferritin is usually high because it's an acute phase reactant, increased total serum protein, increased IgG gamma globulins. Serum protein electrophoresis will show you polyclonal gammopathy. Not to be confused with multiple myeloma, it was a monoclonal gammopathy, hashtag cancer. CBC, low hemoglobin and hematocrit, hashtag anemia. The anemia is normocytic, normochromic, usually. White blood cells, leukocytosis. Platelets, secondary thrombocytosis because of the nasty interleukin-6. O2 antibodies usually are if positive, anti-CCP positive, sometimes positive ANA. Serum, low complement and increased D-dimer. D-dimer is sensitive, but it's not specific. If you tap the rheumatoid joint and get joint fluid analysis, these are the usual results. The volume, greater than 3.5, clarity, translucent to opaque, color, yellow to opalescent, white blood cells from 2,000 to 75,000, PMNs are more than 50%, hashtag inflammation, culture is negative because there is no freaking bacteria. This is what you see on x-ray, remember this is symmetrical. If you suspect atlantoaxial subluxation, don't forget to order x-ray of the cervical spine with flexion and extension views. Tissue biopsy is the most accurate test, although rarely done. Treatment of rheumatoid arthritis is either medical or surgical. Medical is most of the time. Surgical is only when the bleep hits the fan. Medical, NSAIDs, DMARDs or other immunosuppressants such as steroids and azathioprine, cyclosporin A, cyclophosphamide, etc. And then we have the DMODs. We have synthetic DMODs and biological DMODs. Synthetic DMODs include methotrexate. Please never ever forget methotrexate for rheumatoid. This is the number one drug of choice in the United States. In Europe, it's sulfasalazine. Liflunamide, hydroxychloroquine, tufacitinib, roxolutinib, upadacitinib. These are the small molecules. We have talked about all of these in previous videos. TNF include infliximab, adalimumab, sertulizumab, golimumab, and etanercept, a recept for receptor. Non-TNF include abatacept, tocilizumab, rituximab, and the famous anakinra. I have a cardiac pharmacology course on my website. Go to medicosisperfectionalis.com. Use the promo code CARDIOFARM50 to get a 50% discount for a limited time. The amount of information covered in this video was bunkers. So please subscribe, hit the bell and click on the join button. You can support me here or here. Send me an email here. Get my antibiotics course and my electrolytes course and my cardiac pharmacology course at medicosisperfectionalist.com. Thank you so much for watching. As always, be safe, stay happy and study hard. Until next time, we're going to start talking about gout.